I V M. Welcome to Dreaming with Your Eyes Open. Ronnie Screwwala is an entrepreneur who I have admired for a long time. His ability to make inroads in an industry that is so tightly controlled by a few was what first had me so impressed. When he released his book a few years ago, I lapped it up. I was even more impressed. The more I discovered his journey and the various businesses he had been a part of, the deeper my admiration went. When this project came up, I jumped on it wholeheartedly. Where else was I going to get the opportunity to spend so much time discussing the ins and outs of his career and what he has accomplished? Hi, Ronnie. Hi. So uh, I'm going to read out the first line from the chapter, as I always do, I think now. Uh, identifying trucks and trends is one of the most valuable skills any leaders can possess. In a startups and mature businesses, your ability to spot potential trouble is especially critical, saving you time, energy, and grief in the long run. Lose your focus for a minute, though, and those trucks will run you over before you know what's happened. So trucks and trends, it's a unique formulation. I haven't really heard something like this before, right? I mean, like, could you... Well, it rhymes well. Yes, it, it rhymes does. well. Uh, and it kind of, and it's also very, it's very, it's, it kind of articulates it, right? Right, because, it does, yeah. You know, a truck or a train hits you hard than right. an auto rickshaw or a horse, <laughs> but in one sense. And trends is what it, it says there. So mm-hmm. I think that's, it's, it's, it's the wording of that. In the 21st century, I think when everyone's looking at that, and it's relevant that the truck mm-hmm. concept comes here. And I'll tell you why, because when people look at gauging, mm-hmm. today you, everyone thinks of artificial, inter- artificial intelligence and right. AI as, as, a, as a sort of an almost given. Uh-huh. But essentially, the reason why you're, you're moving towards a driverless car is that that machine combined with all artificial intelligence is right. going to be able to preempt 40 different permutations of, of reactions to stop an accident right. before a human brain can, right? Okay. And I think, therefore, preempting trucks and trends is exactly that, which is mm-hmm. that you're going to use as much of your past experience, your failures, everything that's data assimilated in your brain and your heart, your entire gut process right. that tells you, I, shit, I think there's a big problem coming my way. Mm-hmm. And if you can manage to have that gut instinct that gives you that sense, it's not some premonition. Right. It's actually, you can see it somewhere. It's the, Your ability to be prepared and deal with that is actually a phenomenal virtue. It's kind of like the 10,000 hour thing that Malcolm Gladwell talks about, right? This that The more you are immersed in a particular area, the more your experience helps you yeah. to kind of pre... Yeah. So I think that's pretty much it. It, mm-hmm. it. In the 21st century, it's a combination of... AI, it's a combination of data, it's a combination of your gut feeling. Okay. And it's a huge asset if you can have it. Interesting. So, I mean, like, you know, let's talk a little bit about some of the trucks, I think, right? I mean, like that you've dealt with that you speak about in this chapter. So uh, I'm going to read a quote out. Uh, we could have pulled the plug and cut our losses after you 40% into the cost. But that's also the toughest time to make any business call. If you pull, you're almost certainly writing off the full cost. But who's to say for sure is a complete write-off? That's when hope and who knows comes in. And those two rarely pay the bills. This is in reference to the movie. But it's in reference to dance. everything. Okay. It's in reference to everything. <laughs> because it's the toughest call you want right. to take. Because you are guaranteed to not have an answer at, mm. as to your outcome of your decision. Right. And that's the worst call to take, mm. right? Because you're taking a call to write off 40%, knowing full well that you never know that if you did go the 100% way, whether you would have recovered that 40% or not. Right. There's no way. So that's an even tougher call right. than saying, okay, but I, you know, I was proved right or I was proved wrong. In fact, you'll never be proved right hmm. or proved wrong. So, I mean, like a question is for me around this was that in, in a creative business, right? A business where, I don't know about you, but there are often times where there are super successful products in this space, in the creative space, which I don't always enjoy that much, right? So, I mean, like uh, in, in a business like that, is it even tougher to make that kind of a call? Yes, because I think there is no such thing. I think we all, whichever businesses we're in, whether right. it's architecture mm-hmm. or farmer R&D, or creative, all of us think this business we are in is this one special brand of business, which is so unique and so unpredictable and so got so many variables. And, you know, that's the big challenge in the fun of it. There's as much uh, in pharma R&D, sure. if, you're, if you're discovering the next drug for Alzheimer's or for, for cancer, mm. uh, the same when you're designing something in a very different manner, in architecture, whatever right. else. And in, and in, you know, when you're launching a consumer product and the variables between the element of how much sugar is added to a limbupani versus a, a whatever else in the combination right. of any product, it, it, there's innumerable things. Mm. So I think it's, it applies to almost 
everything that you do on a product or service okay. and not to any one particular one, even though all of us feel in our scope of work, right. this is special. Interesting. Now, so again, because I have another question, which I think is also somewhat related to, I feel like the in- entertainment industry and Bollywood specifically. So let me read out this quote, right? So this was in reference to the movie Joker. What we didn't know was when to cut our losses and walk. Get that wrong more than once and you're floundering as an entrepreneur and a leader. That happened to me. It was wrong and foolish. If working relationships need to get strained because you're following your convictions, then let them. The reason I wanted to ask you about this is, I mean, Bollywood's a fairly close-knit industry in that sense, right? So, I mean, is does this increase the challenge in that where you you have to, where relationships become a point where you're willing to sacrifice things for that? Yeah, but again, I was narrating in my book live examples of right. what I went through at that time. Right. But today, I'm and, and and even then, again, I'm saying that's applicable wherever else. Mm-hmm. You can be doing that, uh, you can be retaining a law firm and you don't feel they did exactly what you wanted to do. Right. And that's going to sour a relationship going on. So, I mean, relationships is not special because it comes to an interpersonal thing when it comes to a particular sector or it's a creative sector, mm-hmm. whatever else. I think, uh, you know, when, when things go south on any business partnership at any given stage, you're going to sour that. What I'm saying is when you want to call a business partnership is not working to a joint collaboration is not working together, technological collaboration is not working together. Are you going to start valuing the damage it'll do to the relationship versus the damage it'll do to the continued business with it going south? Right. And it's as simple as that. That's the call you need to take. And therefore, the challenge is the more you get very emotional and or very personal about it, the less objective you're going to be able to be. Right. So, I mean, like the reason I was thinking of Bollywood specifically, right, yeah. is because uh, – it feels like it is a it is a sort of industry where uh, entry is. I mean, like you're an exception in terms of being able to kind of make a significant business in that space, right? Otherwise, most of it is fairly family run, right, or fairly kind of close knit. I mean, that's I think the better way to put it. Uh, which is why I was wondering that. I mean, like, do relationships play a special role in that kind of business? Well, you know, personally, I'm not high on a relation. I'm not a normal relationships building person. Right. I'm. I would be termed more as a transactional person. That okay. does not not. I don't think that does not make me warm. Right. And when I want, and I, I think genuinely, I, I don't want to make it sound too cold cut, mm-hmm. but it's more transactional. Right. Uh, and less relationship. And I think. The development of what I would want to do, the, the the idea, the vision that I would have, the 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 creativity with which I want to execute that, should excite the people to come, and right. not because we had dinner for the last seven consecutive nights. Right, right, okay, fair enough. I think that that actually is very encouraging. Uh, I think for a lot of it people, it may not who be are, true, but it can continue to be encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, I, I think that you know, I mean, like it is something that I have spoken to a number of people who do kind of shy away from this idea. Yeah of getting into the more entertainment spaces because they yeah. feel it's a closed space that they yeah. can't really make an entry into it. Yeah, I mean, everything is closed in every space right. and then you need to figure out how oh. you want to approach it. Right. right. But okay. then you need to work very hard on something else. I mean, uh-huh. you've got, so as I said, to me, if I'm, if I'm doing more of what everybody else was doing right. and I'm not going to have a differentiator, then I'm going to be out anyway. Right. So maybe my point was, what is my differentiator? What do I bring to the table that some of the others don't? Right. Where I maybe could be able to stand out mm-hmm. or at least be different if not stand out. Right. And I think if I take that parallel to the creative business and I put that parallel to any other business, it works the same way. Works you the same need way. to differentiate whatever you're doing yes. and however you're doing yes. it. That's true. Yes. Personal, okay. business-wise, anything. Right. This is another point in this particular chapter, which again, again, is I think a point of particular wisdom. We tend to duck the unpopular, hard decisions, not realizing that eventually, when the results are out, we're not going to be popular anyway. You know, I keep asking you, how do you, how does one kind of try and protect themselves from making these kinds of policies, right? I mean, like because I think that this is again, it feels like if something's human gone south and something hasn't worked. The problem of a relationship souring in any case right. is going to be there. So you might be trying to protect something, thinking. I know in my heart of hearts this is not going to work. Right. But at this point in time, the first thing that's going to come at the crossroads is the relationship that I'm compromising. Mm-hmm. Whereas actually, when it doesn't work, in any case, everyone's going to, the shit's going to hit the fan. Right. So you haven't really saved anything. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, no, I agree with that. I, th- I think I do agree with that. I just feel uh, that there is a tendency with a lot of people who just, they don't want to get into the tough conversation sometimes. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that is something that I think is a... It's costly. It and is it's, costly. It's costly. Yeah. Right. It has its consequences. It does. Yeah. yeah, it does. It does. So any suggestions on how you kind of check well, I think yourself the answer from the that? Question, yeah, I mean, you know, you have to be... <laughs> 
you have to be objective about it yeah. and um, you'd be amazed the problem is actually not having the tough conversation right. it's what you think that impact the conversation is going to have but you are go- your relationship with that person is going to be strained right and i would say 8 out of 10s unless the other side is so immature hmm. or so arrogant if it's not any of those two you'd be surprised that actually the person will thank you for it hmm. maybe not at that particular day but 5 days later one day later but definitely a month later may think this made actual sense and in 2 months you could be a role model for that person right as we mentioned in the other chapter people acclimatize to all kinds of things i guess so i mean this is the same kind of yeah. uh, this so let me bring up another quote from the uh, from this chapter that's why i notice a lot of raised eyebrows when i tell my team members or external colleagues that one of the biggest problems getting in the way of an organization's honest and frank interaction on trucks and trends boils down to one word presentations that's a very harsh view of powerpoint or the hmm. other kinds of uh, presentations that devastatingly <laughs> harsh yeah yeah because uh, the mindset is one of lack of eye contact okay. which i think is a problem okay the mindset is one of you are preparing for hours and hours okay. of what you think somebody else wants to hear right and whether you like it imagine a presentation is going to be blunt mm-hmm. a conversation will be blunt because you'll say what you want to say right. which might be quite praiseworthy slightly puffed up with facts whatever else then per somebody asks some three sharp questions and you're already starting to get to the real truths mm. in a presentation you know it's just a blank dull face looking at that and sometimes you do need to put out some facts mm-hmm. the presentation versus the fact sheet is the difference is you're really presenting upwards so very right. the word presentation means you actually you're you're on, you're on show right yeah and you don't get facts and you don't get the real picture so at amazon there's a rule where no presentations are allowed only memos you have to write a half page memo for anything that you want to talk about makes sense i makes think sense. yeah i makes think sense. that that i think we, you know at utv and some of the other companies we did that 10 years before Amazon did. Okay. I'm sure many many other people do that because I think it's just practical. Yeah. You get people to come to meetings prepared rather than come to meetings to learn about things. Yeah. So But the problem is that I think the word presentation is one where you're trying to pitch upwards. Right. You're never going to be succinct or blank blunt about your facts. Okay. Yeah, and at the end of the day what's the report card on it? Nothing. Right enough. Yeah. No, I I would agree with that too. I I hate having to make them and I hate having to get them. both of them are kind yeah. of painful. Yeah. All right, so uh before we end this chapter I'm going to end with one last quote and a question on that. Looking around the bend requires a constant state of alertness, no room for complacency. Get accustomed to the notion that you can become outdated in an instant. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room to be a great leader, just the one who knows the most about every aspect of your organization and can make decisions based on his best interest. The discipline required is relentless analysis. So this need for constant analysis, right? I think that uh, I, I I get what you're saying. I understand. I buy it completely, right? But I think that uh, people fall in love with their ideas to an extent, right? And they kind of think that the ideas that they have are the ideas that they need to stick with. How do you break people out of that mindset? With 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 setbacks. there's no other shortcut if somebody is okay. that obsessed and think that your idea is the best mm-hmm. no other person is going to give them a death nail on that i mean yeah. either they won't support it or the, he won't get his team or he may not get any funding in which mm-hmm. case it may die its death right but if he could help it the only way it's not going to happen is when he's going to have to f- face that first setback on it okay. because if they haven't done their work if she or he hasn't done their homework on it mm-hmm. and decided that i need to check this out in a hypothesis in many ways mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's no shortcut on that. Yeah. You, you, you're asking for that learning curve and lesson, right? And the next time you'll figure out that I need to do a lot more homework. That answers the first part of the question. The second part of the question for me is, uh, what are the kind of factors you should be looking at when you're trying to do this kind of analysis, right? What kind of uh, should you so be? So, look- to me, analyzing is also just being cur- curious at every given stage. It's okay. about listening to it, listening to feedback. and then you got to be able to it's everything that's warming up your gut decision mm. that's what it is it could okay. be anything i mean the simplistic ones is obviously getting feedback seeing what support comes uh, research analysis focus groups those are all the conventional ones okay. and the best way actually is to you put yourself outside your position into the other on the opposite side and that works better right i mean a, a great legal argument is when somebody doesn't prepare his he doesn't prepare his pitch but he prepares the opposition pitch okay. and a lot of times when i'm finished with a lawyer's brief and i say fantastic great for this advice mm-hmm. now let's just spend the next 10 minutes and will you tell me that if you were on the opposite side what would you do would to all the advice be? that you did here so that i can be a little bit more preemptive in right. what i'm going to do now here and i found those 10 minutes much more useful for my final strategy over that i wanted to persist go ahead and do something right. than not 
Interesting. Okay, well, that makes sense. I should use that lesson going <laughs> forward. Uh, thank you very much. And it's Rahim. not just with lawyers; it was everything else. Also. Uh, no, but I think that's a great way to look at it, right? I mean, like uh, you, you talk about empathy quite a bit in like one of the later chapters, right? Uh, but it's not just about empathy, right? It's also about looking at what you. Some relationships are not necessarily adversarial, but they do have a, you know, there is a adversarial component to them, right? And so when that is the case, looking at what these strategies of the other people are going to be and trying yeah. to kind of yeah. preempt them yeah. makes sense. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Great. Cool. Awesome. Great place to stop. And uh, we'll be back with the next chapter next week. Look forward. Hi, I'm Ronnie Sruwala, and uh, you've been listening to my podcast and the multiple chapters of my book, Dream With Your Eyes Open. And I think to that, I've had good chats here. And I think chapter 13 in my book is all about Q&As, and I'm sure there are more Q&As. Happy to answer them, so send them in, and happy to have a dialogue with you on that. So if you'd like to ask Ronnie a question, send it to us at dreaming at ivmpodcast.com. If selected, we'll read out your question on the last episode and have Ronnie answer it. You can also send a question to us on social media at IVM Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hi, I'm Anupam Gupta, B50 on Twitter, and listen in to the Equity Sahya podcast brought to you by Mozilla Loswal Asset Management Company. The Equity Sahya podcast offers deep investment insights into the potential of many sectors in India which are growing and have a lot to offer for your portfolio. New episodes out every Tuesday on the IBM Podcast app or any other app where you get your podcast from. Janice, what do you think couples did before TV was invented? I don't know, go for walks on the beach, long drives, fancy dinners, have more sex maybe? But what did we do when we decided to move in together? We debated between the Chromecast and the Fire Stick. We gave up on sleeping early so we could stay up watching true crime shows. We got ourselves three cat babies. And basically became the cutest couch potatoes around. Okay then. <laughs> In case you guys still haven't got it, we are a TV crazy, Netflix loving, binge watching Mr. and Mrs. I'm Ani Ritkuha. I'm Jana Sequera. And if like us, you snort TV for breakfast, lunch and dinner, this is the podcast for you. Tune in every Thursday on the IVM podcast app or wherever it is that you get your podcast from. This is Mr. and Mrs. Binge Watch. Binge Watch.